Hello YouTube, welcome to another video. Today I am going to be going over some of the books that I read during the month of January and I'm also going to be announcing some of the titles that I'm going to be reading during this next month, February. Um, I say this next month, but February is already upon us. <laughs> so this month I only read about three titles, mostly because my life has just been very hectic and I do have interests outside of reading so I kind of had to water the whole garden <laughs> in order to get through this month. Otherwise it definitely I feel like was a good month. Let's go ahead and jump into some of the titles that I read. So the first one that I finished in January and I say finished because technically I read this during the month of December, but I finished it within the first week of January. Um, so I will count it. <laughs> but we have The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. Um, so The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner is a debut novel. This is the very first novel by Sarah Penner that has ever been published. And it is a historical fiction about an apothecary that dispensed poisons back in the early 1800s to women to give to the men in their lives. It is set in London, both present day and circa 1800. It has a multiple perspective uh, POV and it's got this dual timeline kind of going with it. And I thought that it was a very interesting concept, very interesting um, approach to a historical fiction. Um, I gave it about three stars out of five because there were some pacing issues, not to mention um, there were some parts where um, the present day character was kind of trying to be a little bit mysterious and vague about something when, you know, just basically coming out with it would have just been totally fine in my own personal opinion. But the story of it is an American woman goes to London for a 10 year anniversary. She goes after finding out that her husband was cheating on her. Yay! <laughs> and she comes across this mysterious vial that belonged to an apothecary that she can't seem to really identify. So she goes on this really extravagant search for this apothecary, hence the lost apothecary, that nobody seems to really know about, um, that isn't marked on any map, um, isn't recorded in any kind of newspaper, and so she goes through this journey of finding the apothecary, but also finding who she lost when she got married, um, which I thought was a really nice message in terms of like rediscovering yourself, um, that I feel like quite a few people just kind of go through, especially when you get older, you start to realize, oh my god, like I just don't have that much passion for this thing that I used to have so much passion for, why did I ever stop, you know, kind of thing. But the second timeline is set in the 1800s about this woman named Nella who inherited her mother's apothecary after her mother had died. And um, I'm not going to like spoil anything for you guys about like how it occurred, but essentially her mother's apothecary became an apothecary exclusively for women to treat their maladies away from men and one that men didn't really know about or go towards. And it turned into this apothecary that became so run down that it's only ever whispered about amongst women. Um, but it was used to dispense poison to women to give to the men in their lives. And overall, it kind of had a, uh, we are women, we should be fighting with each other, not against each other kind of um, dogma about it, um, which I thought was really good in some areas, but in some others, I was just kind of like, okay, this is a little bit preachy. <laughs> so I just gave it about three stars um, out of five, but overall it wasn't terrible, you know, but also like that ending, what was that? <laughs> like I just, I don't, I don't understand the ending so much because it's very vague and very like up to your personal interpretation. But I, I wasn't a huge fan of the ending. I thought, it was poetic in some aspects, but in others, it was just kind of like, the fuck? 
Um, but yeah, so that was the very first book that I read in January of 2022. So the next book that I read, I read The Mystery of Mrs. Christie by Mary Benedict. And oh my God, this story. Ah, I did not want to be putting this down at all. This was the book that I brought with me to work and that I would read on my breaks or on my way to work or on my way home. Um, just kind of like to keep myself occupied, not constantly on my phone all the time. Um, <laughs> Cause I do have a nasty habit of doing that. Um, but oh my God, this just blew me out of the water. I absolutely loved every single minute of it. It felt like, like it, it, it genuinely to me felt like this could have very much happened during the, during 1926 for all that I know. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't born there. I wasn't Agatha Christie, but oh my God, this was just so beautiful. I highly recommend this book. I really, really highly recommend it. Um, it's got very much like Gone Girl vibes and it is just amazing so so beautiful so this one was also a dual perspective dual timeline um on the first timeline it is when agatha christie as she's later known meets her husband archibald christie and um kind of how they fell in love and got married and how their relationship evolved over time and then the other timeline is during december of 1926 when agatha christie has mysteriously disappeared for 11 days and and for those who don't know, Agatha Christie is a huge mystery writer. She's considered the queen of mystery. And she just, in my own personal opinion, one of my favorite writers of all time. I love Agatha Christie. Literally anything Agatha Christie, I'm on it. <laughs> but the second timeline just basically kind of follows Archie and um, how he navigates the investigation of his wife's mysterious disappearance. And it is just so beautifully written. This felt like what the Lost Apothecary could have been. This one definitely held a lot of, um, I want to say cathartic healing for me because as a woman who, you know, kind of hasn't had the best interactions with men throughout my life, um, <laughs> you know, um, this was definitely very, um, cathartic to me um in terms of how agatha kind of navigated the relationship that she had with archie and that ending i knew it was gonna happen at the very end but it was so fucking good i loved it i loved it i love you marie benedict you are a god's gift to the world i swear and the final book that i read for january i finished this literally the day January ended, um, or at least, I, yeah, I finished it literally on January 31st, is a, another debut novel. It is a dark fantasy called For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. This is so beautifully woven and so intricately described. Oh my God. <laughs> so For the Wolf is essentially a Red Riding Hood slash Beauty and the Beast retelling of those two fairy tales. So it is about essentially this um, bargain that is made by this magical forest called the Wilder Wood. Um, long ago, there were two people who were very much in love who made a bargain for safety from those who wished them harm. And they were then considered the wolf and second daughter. And essentially how it goes is any second daughter that is born within that country, essentially they would have to be given up to the wilder wood. And the story kind of follows a set of twins that are in a royal family of their country of Alida. Um, the firstborn is named Neve or Nevera, and the second daughter who has to go into the wilder wood as a sacrifice is named Rideris, or as everyone calls her, Red. And she ends up having to go into the wilder wood and everyone around her is essentially telling her, no, you don't need to go, like, come on, like, don't, you gotta fight this, just run, do anything you can to escape. And she's like, no, y'all don't get it because there is something about her where she's like, I need to protect those around me. Doesn't really fight the whole notion because she feels like she needs to protect those that are around her that she holds really near and near to her heart. Um, and when she goes into the Wilderwood, she really quickly realizes that a lot of the myths that she was told 
um, growing up are not completely true. It's so immersive and it's beautiful and dark and it's just, oh my god, I, mm, I love this, I love this book so much. Um, and the fact that it was a debut and it's just this beautifully written, oh my god, it's so, so wonderful. Uh, For the Wolf also has a sequel that is coming out sometime in 2022 called For the Throne and I am so excited to be reading that so as soon as it comes out you'll better be prepared for a review on that book because oof. if it's anything like For the Wolf like it's gonna be perfection let me tell you that <laughs> and now I'm going to be briefly discussing some of the books that I'm going to be reading in February um, just kind of as a precursor, I have not read any of these titles. I am trying to read every single book that I have on my bookshelves that I just haven't gotten around to reading or haven't gotten around to finish reading. Um, just to kind of help myself uh, to not constantly buy books that I'm just gonna lay on my shelf and never read. <laughs> Bless you! <laughs> Um, so first off we have Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. Um, I've heard some good things about this book and I figured this would be a perfect book for me to bring to work during February. Um, it is a romance novel. The back of it reads, with her newly completed PhD in astronomy in hand, Grace Porter goes on a girl's trip to Vegas to celebrate. She is a straight A hardworking high achiever. She is not the kind of person who goes to Vegas and gets drunkenly married to a woman whose name she doesn't know until she does exactly that <laughs> and honestly when I was kind of skimming through books at Target because that's where I got these because Target has such a beautiful selection as small as it may be it's beautiful um honestly it had me hooked <laughs> um it's very much of a story about um kind of fighting against your own truth due to cultural backgrounds and fighting with the um, expectations that family has about you and just kind of coming to terms that, you know, you are who you are and who you love is who you're gonna love. And I am really excited to um, read this. It holds the perspective of a black woman in America. I'm just, I'm really, really excited to read this, um, mostly because I've noticed that a lot of the books that I read, unfortunately, <laughs> are mostly from white perspectives and are in, they kind of spotlight white characters a lot and so I just kind of wanted to break free from that and read something just kind of fluffy, you know, um, especially since, you know, February is the month of love and all that stuff. Um, I just thought that this would be a really nice kind of cute fluffy romance. Hopefully it's a fluffy romance. <laughs> I'm I'm more I'm more than assuming that there is probably going to be some trauma in this, but that's okay, because you know what? We work through trauma here on this channel. It's a part of the process. Um but yeah, this is a gonna be the one that I read to work, at work, and from work, so hopefully this will last me. <laughs> Up next we have the one book that I am most definitely not gonna be taking out to public at all. Um, I feel kind of weird buying this, not, not lying, because I've heard that it is a spicy, spicy book that is A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. Um, from what I know about this, this is basically a Persephone and Hades retelling. Um, and I've heard that it's a, it's an interesting book. <laughs> this book is definitely staying at home. No objections there. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the first paragraph of the synopsis. Uh, Persephone is the goddess of spring and tidal only. Since she was a little girl, flowers have only shriveled at her touch. After moving to New Athens, she hoped to lead an unassuming life disguised as a mortal journalist. All of that changes when she sits down in a forbidden nightclub to play a hand of cards with a hypnotic and mysterious stranger. So I am definitely going to be diving into this head first. Bring on the smut. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> and probably my most ambitious read of this month. I'm going to be reading Pride and Prejudice, the original Enemies to Lovers, and 
All I'm gonna say now is that I've never read Pride and Prejudice. I've never read a single Jane Austen novel. So I was really happy to find something to get her completed works um, from, at least I think this is her completed works. I don't know how much she's written because that woman was accomplished. <laughs> um, but yeah, I always hear from people who like read the classics that Pride and Prejudice is just one of those stories that really, you know, shows idealized men. And I'm totally ready for Jane Austen to ruin any perception of men for me because I am already just like losing faith. <laughs> but let's hope that once I'm finished reading Pride and Prejudice that um, my ideal for men will not allow me to become shriveled true and die alone with a thousand cats in my home. Let's hope. <laughs> but honestly, that was most likely going to happen either way. <laughs> this is the little stack that I'm going to be reading. Trust me, the really big book at the, at the top. It, it's only gonna be like a fraction, hopefully. <laughs> so I am really excited to read these books and I am hoping to eventually get out some reviews for you guys. Uh, let me know in the comments if there are any books that you would like me to read on this channel and just kind of review. I hope to be doing kind of individual reviews. Um, that will most definitely have spoilers because some books I, I could literally ramble on and on and on about, but some I just like one sentence review that's it for me. <laughs> Let me know what else you guys are hoping to see. Um, yeah, so we'll see how this goes. Hopefully this will be a pleasant February and hopefully it will not snow here in Oregon. Praying. <laughs> I will hopefully see you guys in the next video and stay safe, stay sane, get off the internet and go read a book, hug your pet, hug a person, hug a tree, hug something, hug yourself. Because, I mean, you really need some loving. Just saying. <laughs> but I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!